we had a lovely house, a lovely family of our own. We were having a nice time with our own children and we thought it would be nice to share it with other children who didn't have a family of their own already. And we knew there were lots of children who didn't enjoy those privileges. Our girls had everything and we knew there were other children out there that we could share our lives with and we thought it would be a, a lovely thing to do. The way we went about it was that um, we obviously talked and talked loads and loads about it, not just me and your mum, but Danielle and Charlotte as well. Um, but the deal was I had to make the phone call and uh, ask social services how we go about it so that, if you like, to show I was committed to it, but also so I didn't feel pressurised. For us, the process was long and difficult. It took two and a half years from the first phone call to children's services saying we were interested to the children actually being placed with us, which is an exceptionally long time and uh, rules have been changed since that mean that these things have to take place quicker. It's not fair on the family who are waiting and it's not fair on the children who are being placed or waiting for a placement. Now, the process itself is very, very in-depth and I can't even remember how many meetings we had. I could look back and I still wouldn't be able to work out, but there were so many meetings with, with various different people and they basically go into every single bit of your life, every bit. They don't hold fire on what might be embarrassing or not embarrassing. They ask you everything you could think of. Things move very quickly then. Once you've been approved, they're round saying... We've got some children who might be suitable. What do you think? So we were then shown straight away, more or less straight away, we were shown out of a brown envelope uh, some details of some children who might be suitable. And we were allowed to go away and read all the information that was gathered about the children. And then we were asked on, about our thoughts, what we thought. Um, we just looked at each other and said, yes, there will be difficulties, but we think we can deal with these girls. They were aged four and six. And then the social worker said, well, if you're interested, would you like to see a picture of them? And then she, sh <laughs> she showed us this picture and they were absolutely beautiful. We had brief introductions. I don't know if you remember these yourself, but we had brief introductions where we went round to um, your foster family and we, were, we, we met you uh, and that was, that was a very, uh, very strange experience because again we're walked, we walk in and we're introduced as your potential future family just on the spot like that uh, yeah, and I can't imagine how you must have felt at the time um, but for us it's uh, a, bit, a bit easier for us because we're grown ups you know we, we can deal with things like that but even so um, it was a bit surreal and uh, it's very hard to go in and say, hello, we're, we're your new parents. You can't do that. You have to just go in and talk gently to them and play with them and ask, would you like a new mummy and daddy? Um, we went to Pam and Gary's to meet you and then I think we picked you up and took you to some lighthouse <laughs> and maybe a playground. And, um, yeah, it was just... It was just fun, really. It was like having, well, another two two people to, to play with. But then eventually there just come a time when you're in the car, you're on the way home with all the belongings, and this is it, this is the moment. And it's really quite scary because you've got a whole future ahead of you, you've got no past between you, you've got to start making new memories. So the most difficult thing I found about having two younger adopted sisters was that I had been the youngest child, so the baby of the family, and me and Danielle had always had our own toys, one of everything. Um, so I found sharing very difficult, um, sharing toys, sharing knives and forks, sharing my seat that I sat on all the time. I think just like anyone, if you live with them on a day-to-day -day basis, you, you do things with them. So I remember um, teaching you to play the keyboard, um, 
and we'd like try and do do your hair you know once you've had a shower and stuff but I don't think you really liked having it brushed to be completely honest. One, one thing that sticks into my mind obviously what we tried to do is like we did with Danielle and Charlotte you know obviously find things that you enjoy doing take you to places take you to activities um, which again can be a bit scary for you because you might be left on your own when you know you've only just got to know us and suddenly you're left on your own completely but I just remember taking you to places in the car and the two of you sat in the back seat um, and I'd look in the mirror and, and you just looked lost. What are we doing? What are we doing? And I still remember that image in the back of the car, these, these poor two little kids who've come to stay with us and you know we've got to look after them. I just remember thinking, I hope I do a good job. It is quite difficult as well sometimes um, with the sort of behaviour that... Um, children display um who have been been adopted because of like attachment and things and I think um there was a lot of getting used to that um because you know it's just different ways of managing the behavior which you have to be very patient with and it can go on all night some of the problems we encountered more or less straight away were anxiety due to being left on their own, at home, uh, and not being cared for properly. Uh, the eldest child would want to know where we are, what we're doing, what the arrangements are for anything, any travel anywhere, would, would she be left on her own? She was always worried about being abandoned. So 16 years on, I, I wouldn't change any of the decisions at all. I wouldn't... I. Like, I've always classed you as my sisters and I wouldn't ever not class you as my sisters. You are my sisters. And 16 years is a long time. That's more than half my life now. <laughs> so I've known life more with you in it than not. Um, and also, I think if if you hadn't have come to live with us, then I wouldn't have wanted to go into social work or do something, you know, job-related to helping children and families. Uh, well, I wouldn't change it. I definitely think it was a good decision. Uh, to be honest, I think after I was 18, so about five years after we adopted you, um, I haven't spent a lot of time at home, so I don't think it really has made too much difference to what I would, would be doing otherwise. Um, it's nice to have two more people as part of the family. Um, it's nice to see like what you're doing, especially you've gone off to university, um, which I think is really good. Um, Shannon's working you know I think if we've seen such an improvement in in you over the years that I didn't really necessarily even expect to to see so that's really nice you know there's, there's been ups and downs but there are with with any family and any child and what we wanted to to do at the start without wishing to sound too altruistic is is just provide opportunities and, and hope to see yourself and Shannon grow up and find your own way in life and find your own ideas, be your own person. Uh, and I think you have done. So if, if that's a success, then I think, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with that because all I want my children to do is be happy with life, find something that they enjoy doing uh, and, and, and be nice people, be good people. I'm really glad what we did and I wouldn't change anything. I think it's worked very well. I felt sorry for them many, many times because they didn't have a choice. They weren't asked what they wanted, really. They were just told this is what's happening. And that's been very hard for them because they've often felt maybe they could have gone to somebody else or been doing something else. But for us, I think it's been good. And you certainly learn more about yourself. You challenge yourself to do something and I've learnt a lot about myself too but I wouldn't change anything. <laughs>